Hi, this is Jeff Prospin, sales engineer for Fluke Calibrations, pressure and flow, mass flow calibration solutions. Here to provide you a demonstration on one of our three modular pressure controllers. Happen to have here the 8270A, which has a maximum pressure of 6,000 PSI, complemented by the 6270A, maximum pressure of 3,000 PSI, and the 8370A, maximum pressure of 15,000 PSI. The nice thing is they all share a lot of commonality, which makes them easy to switch between and easy to use. Very small footprint. They all have modules, pressure measurement modules that are used to make pressure measurements at the desired pressure. Pressure measurement modules can be of various ranges and various uncertainties and can be mixed and matched to optimize the configuration for your solution. And all of our pressure controllers have very wide ranging turndown, so you can just as easily do a 6,000 PSI calibration with the 8270 as you can a 50 PSI calibration without having to make any changes. When it's time to calibrate the module, the measurement module, Take the thumb wheel, spin it, take out the module that you're trying to calibrate. You can see it takes less than two or three seconds. When, it's, when it comes back from calibration, simply reinstall it in the same or a different slot of your choice and wait until you hear the click. And that means it's locked in, no torque wrench necessary and no over tightening. The last module over here is the pressure control module. That's really the main difference between the three chassis. Pressure control module is what allows the pressure to set or allows the controller to set the pressure. And this one happens to be a 6,000 PSI module. To operate, it's all touchscreen with various uh, functions depending on where you press on the front panel. And typically we calibrate analog gauges, digital gauges, pressure transducers, or other instruments uh, that you want. What the, pressure, what the pressure controller will do is respond to your input by automatically setting the pressure. What we have here is the accessory called the contamination prevention system. It protects the pressure controller from the contamination that may be in the device in our test that comes from its industrial use, whether it's liquid or particulates. When the pressure exhausts, if it didn't have the, if we don't have the pressure contamination prevention system, the pressure will exhaust through the pressure controller, taking with it or extracting some of the liquid and therefore causing, possibly causing damage. We can, we can avoid that by installing the pressure contamination prevention system and all the pressure will exhaust through the contamination prevention system with the contamination being captured in the sump right here. You heard a second ago the a burst of, of air, that's the pressure booster that we sell, that we offer, that allows us to get, achieve the 6,000 PSI supply pressure that's necessary to, of course, control up to 6,000 PSI. Okay, in this brief example, we're going to set a 3,000 PSI test point to compare the device in our test to the controller, the reference. We simply touch the field corresponding to set point, enter in 3,000 PSI, and tell the pressure controller to control, and it's on its way. Now we want to go to 4,500 PSI. We can simply hit the step button. Okay, so we've reached 4,500 PSI. We're controlling very tightly. Uh, when the booster is not accelerating, you can hear how quietly uh, the controller controls. So the next thing we're going to do is we, we're going to go down all the way to 30 PSI to show how well it controls over a very wide range. By the way, uh, we are in what's called auto mode. So the controller is picking the, the module that has the best uncertainty for the point we're measuring uh, every time we take a measurement point. You do have the option to use fixed mode if you prefer that the same reference module is used every time we measure at a point. So, so, so to go down to 30 PSI, we simply type in 30, hit enter, and we're gonna go. And you can listen again as the CPS exhausts the pressure, not the controller exhausting the pressure. Okay, here we are at our final test point of 30 PSI. We happen to be connected to a digital pressure gauge right now, but if we were connected and calibrating an analog gauge, what we'd wanna do at all points is to align the needle so that it's directly above the nominal pressure, so it's much easier to read without having to interpolate. The way we would do that, for example, right now, let's say, for example, it was a little bit under 30 PSI, we wanted to be at 30, we have a jog knob. What you do is you reach over, watch the gauge, and as you turn the knob, the set pressure will continue to increase until it gets to a point where the needle is right above that 30 PSI. At that point, you would stop and then you would record what the reference is, in this case, 30.17. Here, as an example, you see 30.00 on the digital pressure gauge. 